Welcome to Map Analysis for Hedgehogs. Today I want to show you um, or give you a review for this book here. Um, Malware Analysis and Detection Engineering, a comprehensive approach to detect and analyze modern malware. Now this book is from 2020, so it's fairly new. And um, we had three junior analysts starting this year at the work and all of them said it's a good book. So I thought I want to check this out. And well, that is my opinion on it. So let's start with the things I liked about the book. Um, firstly, this is a um, pretty comprehensive book. Like there's a lot of topics covered that others don't cover, especially um, malware family identification, uh, malware detection engineering, so writing signatures for uh, detecting malware, which are very common tasks for malware analysts, but still when it comes to books that describe how to start malware analysis, mostly they only concentrate on the reverse engineering part and not on these um, quite specific tasks that are very common and necessary to know. So this is something I really appreciate here. Um, furthermore, the book is very good at explaining things in an easy way. So they are easy to understand, even if it's a difficult topic. Um, they do not shy away from the topic rootkits, for instance, which usually require a lot of knowledge about Windows internals to understand. Um, now I have this knowledge. I'm not sure how hard it is to understand those, but I think from my perspective that it's still the easiest way to explain it. So um, to go into that uh, kind of detail, that that is like the easiest way. So I also like the, for instance, the exploit kit flow or the process injection descriptions. Um, that's really good. Um, most, most of the time, these are topics that are just glanced over um, and not where no one goes into detail, but actually the, especially the um, process injection stuff is something that you need. And I, I think that it's a good choice to go into detail of um, the techniques that exist. So they also try to predict what are common uh, questions of beginners. And um, generally the style is like, you need to imagine this like um, someone is sitting in front of you, a colleague, for instance, and uh, just trying on top of the head to explain to you how, how it works with easy language. And um, that would be also the biggest drawback, actually. Um, like I said, you can imagine the style as a friend sitting at a bar trying to explain to you how malware analysis works. And um, the same is also true when it comes to accuracy um, or, and definitions of those terms and to consistency. Now imagine this friend is trying to explain to you what packers are and how they work. Now they will say, ah oh, yeah, the packer, that's the uh, decryption step, the, the part of the pack program that will decrypt um, the payload. 10 minutes later, he will say, ah oh, yeah, the packer, that's a program that compresses other programs. And then you might already get a little bit confused because 10 minutes earlier, he said something different. And um, then he says, yeah, yeah, Packer is actually a program that takes a PE file and uh, outputs another PE file that is then different. So, and the, that way it goes on and on. So you have, uh, first you have inconsistencies, which might just stem from the fact that there are two different authors who have written the book. Um, but this should have been noticed in the review process. And this is really not good, yeah? And the other is uh, individual sentences. They are not true in the way they are written there. They are just examples of what packers do. Like packer, when you say packer is a program that compresses other programs, it is wrong. 
there are packers that compress other programs. That would be true. And the same is with the PE file example, like packers take a PE file and then output another PE file. Well, some packers do, some packers don't. Um, none of those are actual explanations of what a packer is. So um, that is really a bummer because this makes, this can make learning a bit confusing. Um, if you take those definitions seriously, then you just get confused later on that there is a different explanation of that or that things do not add up. Um, second, second disadvantage I want to mention, but that is one that a lot of books don't do well. Um, so this is not, not just this one. Um, they have a chapter on um, setting up your analysis lab, but this is not enough uh, to stay safe with analysis. Um, while they explain to you, yeah, you need to um, isolate your network, they do not really say how to practically do this when you are trying to build your malware lab at home. And um, if it's at a company, you usually don't need to know that because other people will do that for you. If if you get and work in a malware analysis company, they will tell you, hey, uh, this is the network to use for malware analysis. So, And there's no work for you to set this up. So. Um, yeah, so generally they explain the dangers of uh, worm, worm infections that uh, can happen through the network, um, but they do not explain how to avoid infection from transporting your sample from the host to the VM and uh, avoid infections of shared folders and uh, connected devices. So. Um, this is just not part of the topic. And at the same time, they will provide exercises where you handle, deal with ransomware. So if you are naive, uh, like if you, if you start out as a beginner, then naive in that sense that you just don't know how, how to properly uh, secure everything, you might just set up your Malware lab VM, like it's described in the book, and later on, oh yeah, there's the ransomware, there's Gencrab, uh that you need to, where you need to identify the family, and you will execute this on your analysis lab, and then oh, my backup, um, HD, my my backup disk is now encrypted because it was uh, connected um, with USB to the VM. So this is a uh, not so good. Another thing um, that I would rather call a missed opportunity by the authors is to make, to use more current tools and operating systems in their um, book. So for instance, the malware lab that they set up is Windows 7 and 32-bit only. Like, I mean, why? A lot of malware nowadays is 64-bit. Why? Why? do you limit the lab to this um, setup? I think it might have to do with the um, rootkits samples that are used later because rootkits are usually heavily dependent on the operating system version. Um, but still, like 32-bit only, it recommends Oli Debug and PID. Um, those tools are outdated now. I would not in include them into any of the uh, modern analysis book. So in that regard, this book does not have an advantage over older books which use the same tools. So if you consider buying, let's say, Practical uh, Mav Analysis by Honig and Sikorsky versus this one, I think in regard, there's no advantage that this book here is more current. It's not. Some general remarks about the book. Now, this is a pretty heavy book, so it's not not the best book for traveling, but then of course they pack a lot of information in there. There's, there are a lot of topics that other books do not cover um, and a lot of details. So this is generally, it's neither bad nor good thing, depends what you want. Um, but um, 
if you compare this to books of similar size, uh, let's compare this, this is Windows and Terminals part one that has like uh, 780 pages and uh, this ours has 900 pages. So uh, it took me three weeks to read this malware analysis and detection engineering. I did not do any of the um, exercises so. And it took me several months, more than a year actually, to read this one. Um, the reason is that the text in this book, the font is rather big. There are a lot of screenshots, a lot of images, which is very good for comprehension, for easy understanding, uh, but still it's less text than you might, might expect from that. The titles are relatively big too, um, and also something that you will see a lot is that uh, half half of the page is just empty because I wanted to place the screenshot at a certain location in the text. So this happens quite often and um, means that you have actually less text than you might get from other books of that size. Um, <clears throat> Furthermore, there is no real um, isolation of theoretical information and practical stuff. So this is a decision that the authors made. They said, um, if you just put all of the exercises at the end of a chapter, no one will do them, um, which is probably true. Uh, but it also means, depending on how you read books and how you work through books, this can be a disadvantage or an advantage. Yeah. So I personally do not like to read while the computer is right in front of me and I get distracted by stuff on the computer. But with this book, if you want to actually work through this, you would rather have to sit in front of your computer while reading it so you can, um, you know, do the stuff that they tell you. It's not really separate. Um, if you do not like to do practical stuff at all, um, then you can read it. Uh, it will show you the outputs of the programs. Um, it's not recommended though. If you really want to learn something, do this stuff that is written there. So do, do it and you won't, um, won't remember them otherwise. So um, yeah, if, I mean, an, a different example to that would be practical map analysis by um, Honig and Tsikorsky. Uh, they have exercises at the end of the chapter, if I remember that correctly. Um, it's separate from the theoretical stuff and um, that would be more like, okay, when I have time to sit at my computer, um, I can do these exercises and find them immediately. And when I want to read, I just read. So yeah, depends on your style and how you want to work. So to sum this up, would I recommend this book? I would say that depends on what you want to do with it um, and what kind of you know, learning type you are. Um, if you prefer books that are more casual in their style um, and if you don't need exact definitions, that's perfectly fine. Or if you have additional books that you use for those definitions, then this is perfectly fine. Um, if you need some resources for a, let's say, thesis, bachelor thesis, master thesis topic or project where you want to cite definitions, do not use this book. Um, this will just get you in trouble because they don't have proper definitions. So in general, I would say, yeah, um, this is some very, keep in mind this has also some very distinct advantages which is certain topics that are covered that you do not find in other books right now uh, to my knowledge um, like the detection engineering part and the mother family identification part so this is um, a good reason um, to buy this one so and um, yeah let me know what you think of this book or if I, if you like those kind of book reviews, let me know if you want a review of a different book. So um, you can make suggestions below and um, let's see you next time.